A very good evening aspirants. I welcome you all to the Hindu daily news analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. A kind request to you all, those who haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, do subscribe and hit the bell icon button so that you will get regular notifications about our current affairs videos. Also, don't forget to like and comment on the video. Now, before getting into the discussion, I have an important announcement to you. The announcement is regarding prelims test series. Batch 2 of Shankar's prelims test series is about to begin on 15th October and the first test will be conducted on 22nd October. A total of 48 tests including mock tests and CSAT will be provided in the test series and the test will be conducted in both online and offline mode. So, go and register for the test series and boost your prelim score. Now, with this happy announcement, let us get into news analysis. Today, I am going to cover important news articles from the Hindu newspaper dated 5th of October 2023. Displayed here is a list of news articles that we will be discussing today. Now let us get into our first news article discussion. Look at this news article. The news is that the 2023 Nobel Prize in Chemistry has been awarded to three scientists namely Alexei Ekimov, Louis Bruss and Mongi Bavendi. They have been awarded Nobel Prize for their research on quantum dots. Okay, This is all about the news. In this discussion we will understand some points about quantum dots, its properties and applications. First of all, what are quantum dots? Quantum dots are nothing but nano sized crystals. They are made from semiconductor materials like cadmium sulphide, cadmium selenide, indium arsenide, indium phosphide, lead sulphide and so on. See the quantum dots exhibit unique optical and electronic properties. The quantum dots have the ability to transport electrons between the quantum dots. Apart from this, the quantum dots can also absorb and emit light in different colors depending on their size. Okay, Now, I will explain to you in simple terms. Let us imagine quantum dots as something tiny particles. Here the tiny particles are extremely so small which means that we can't able to see them with our eyes and it can be seen through some specialized devices like microscope. See when we shine light on quantum dots that is on the tiny particles they start to glow in different colors depending on their size. They glow just like little light bulbs. But what is more interesting is that we can control the color by changing the size of quantum dots. Note that the smaller quantum dots emit blue light and the bigger dot emits red light. So basically the size of quantum dots determines the color of light emitted by them. See this light emitting property of quantum dots are used by scientists in many areas. Okay, Now we will see various applications of quantum dots. Firstly quantum dots are used to make advanced displays. See quantum dots are used in high quality displays like LED TVs and laptops. The quantum dots enhance the quality of the display by providing highly accurate and vibrant colors. See if the quantum dots are used in the displays then such display is called QLED display. Okay. Secondly, quantum dots are used in biomedical imaging. Quantum dots are used in medical imaging for creating better images of tissues and cells. So, they help to detect diseases and to monitor the treatment more effectively. Thirdly, quantum dots are used in targeted drug delivery. The quantum dots can be employed in drug delivery systems to precisely target specific cells or tissues in the body. Okay. Fourthly, the quantum dots are used in LED lighting. The quantum dots are used to produce high quality and energy efficient LED lights. See when we use quantum dots in LED lights, they can generate more colors with less energy. Okay. Fifthly, the quantum dots are used in solar cells. See the quantum dots can be tuned to absorb specific wavelengths of light effectively. So when we use quantum dots in solar cells, we can capture a broader range of sunlight. So quantum dots improve the energy efficiency of solar cells. Lastly, quantum dots are used in quantum computing. See quantum dots play an important role in the functioning of quantum computers. As I already said, the quantum dots have the ability to transport electrons between the quantum dots. So in a quantum computer, the quantum dots can trap and manipulate electrons in an efficient manner. This in turn makes quantum computer a faster and efficient one. Okay, This is all about the applications of 
quantum dots. So to sum it up, the quantum dots are nanocrystal particles that have unique electronic and light emitting properties. These properties of quantum dots are used in variety of fields. Okay, and that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about what are quantum dots, then about the properties of quantum dots, and finally we saw some points about the applications of quantum dots. So this topic is very much important for your both prelims and mains. So revise all the facts that we discussed. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this front page article. The news article reports that at least seven people were died in Sikkim due to a sudden flood caused by a glacial lake burst. According to the National Disaster Management Authority, the South Lonak Lake in northern Sikkim have burst due to an avalanche from the ice capped feature. Nearly half of the lake was drained out and it caused floods in the Tista River basin. The floods also destroyed the Sikkim's Changtang Dam. Okay, this is the crux of the news article. Now in this discussion, let us learn some points about glacial lake outburst flood, their causes and some mitigation measures. Now let us start with glacial lake. See the glacial lakes are the lakes that are formed due to the steadily melting ice at very top of glaciers. This glacial lake is contained and regulated by the dams to ensure the steady flow of melted water. However, in the event of a sudden melting or faster melting of glacier in such lakes, the steady release of melted water suddenly increases. Apart from this, the breaking and falling of huge glaciers into the lake also increases the water over the lake. These factors make glacial lakes very unstable. And this results in sudden release of enormous quantities of water, debris and sediment into downstream areas. And this lead to catastrophic flooding. Okay, this event is what termed as glacial lake outburst flood. In simple terms, glacial lake outburst flood refers to the rapid drainage of water from a glacial lake due to some natural trigger like avalanches, breaking of glaciers or unusual melting of glaciers okay i hope you understood about glacial lake outburst flood now what are all the causes of glacial lake outburst flood firstly the extreme weather events like excessive rainfall rapid snow melting due to heat waves and other disaster natural events like earthquakes can cause glacial lake outburst flood secondly the rapid slope movement of glaciers can also lead to glacial lake outburst floods okay thirdly lack of dams in the glacial lakes to regulate the flow of water can also lead to glacial lake outburst floods okay these are all some of the natural reasons and some of the anthropogenic causes like global warming due to carbon emissions and the climate change will also increase the frequency of glacial lake outburst floods okay now finally let us see about the mitigation of glacial lake outburst floods See, the National Disaster Management Authority has issued some guidelines which can be followed to reduce the impacts of glacial lake outburst floods. Firstly, the introduction of early warning systems and implementation of advanced monitoring systems in vulnerable areas to detect glacial lake outburst floods can help to avoid the loss of lives. This is because these systems can provide timely warnings to downstream communities. Secondly, developing hazard maps and land use regulations also help to mitigate glacial lake outburst floods. These types of regulations ensure that the vulnerable areas near glacial lakes are not densely populated or it is not used for critical infrastructure. So this helps in the mitigation of glacial lake outburst floods. Thirdly, construction of buildings and infrastructures that can withstand glacial lake outburst floods can be one of the solutions to tackle flood. This may include elevated homes, flood resistant bridges and protective dams. And finally, establishing clear evacuation routes and conducting regular drills can also ensure that the communities are prepared to respond quickly when a glacial lake outburst floods warning is issued. Okay. These are all some of the NDMA guidelines that can be followed to mitigate the impacts of glacial lake outburst floods. Okay. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this editorial article. This article talks about climate change. 
here the author of the editorial mentioned the term climate polycrisis this term was made popular by a historian adam thoos this term literally means that the climate change is interconnected and compounded one here the word interconnected means the climate change is not only affecting few sectors like agriculture and food production but also affecting various domains like urban governance monetary policy political coups etc and the word compounded means that the impact of climate change on one sector will reinforce the impact on another sector and vice versa okay see by quoting the term climate polycrisis the author has explained the impacts of climate change on various domains he also suggested some measures to tackle climate change so in this discussion we will understand these points in detail as usual we will approach this topic with mains answer writing come interactive approach now before getting into discussion let us look into the syllabus in prelims this topic comes under general issues on environmental ecology biodiversity and climate change and in mains this topic comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of conservation environmental pollution and degradation environmental impact assessment this is all about the syllabus now first we look at the question the question is the climate change is a polycrisis that is affecting various sectors and domains in the light of the above statement analyze the effects of climate change on various sectors and list out the solutions to tackle climate change in an efficient manner see in this question the keyword is analyze in this type of question we have to break an issue into various parts and we have to explain how the issues related to one another okay now come to the question the statement in the question says that the climate change is a poly crisis affecting various sectors and domains so in the introduction part we have to write some basic points about climate change then the main body of the answer can be split into two parts in the first part we have to write some points regarding the impacts of climate change on various sectors and in the second part we need to write some suggestions and finally in the conclusion part we have to suggest a good way forward okay this is how you have to approach the question now let us start with introduction see here the question is about climate change so in the introduction we can write a classic definition of climate change here the definition is the climate change refers to a long term change in the temperatures and weather patterns of the world the climate change occurs due to both natural and man made activities the natural causes include changes in the sun's activity large volcanic eruptions and so on and the man made causes include high carbon emissions deforestation and so on despite climate changes caused due to both natural and man made activities the man made or anthropogenic activities are the main driver of climate change okay and the climate change is a poly crisis as it is affecting various sectors and domains here the impacts of climate change on these sectors varies from physical social economic and political challenges okay so this can be a introduction for this question otherwise you will start your intro by quoting some data from significant reports for example let us see the data from world economic forums global risks report 2023 the 2023 global risks report states that failure to mitigate climate change and failure of climate change adoption are the two most severe risks of the world in the next decade these failures may lead to natural disasters and extreme weather events and biodiversity loss and ecosystem collapse so we have to act quickly to mitigate the climate change induced disasters okay so you can also write an intro like this now coming to the body of the answer see in the first part we should write the impacts of climate change across various domains now we will understand the impacts now first let us take the impact of climate change on health see according to world health organization report climate change affects the social and environmental determinants of health like clean air safe drinking water sufficient food and secure shelter etc apart from this the who data shows that between 2030 and 2050 the climate change is expected to cause approximately 250000 additional deaths per year due to malnutrition malaria diarrhea and heat stress from these data of world health organization we can observe that the climate change will have a serious impact on human health 
in addition to this the climate change will also increase the risk of health infection then increase the spread of zoonotic diseases etc overall the climate change will pose a huge risk to the global health architecture particularly for developing countries like india okay this is the first impact now secondly let us see the impact of climate change on agriculture as we all know the agriculture sector employs a significant portion of india's population that is almost 50% of indian population are engaged in agriculture see these people are particularly vulnerable to climate change for example climate change induced extreme events like droughts floods and pest attacks will hamper the crop yields this resulting in loss of farmers income and may lead to farmer suicide apart from this the climate change induced irregularities like el nino change in rainfall patterns change in sea surface temperatures will also affect the monsoon of india as india is mostly relying on rain fed agricultural model the irregular monsoon affects the indian farmers so overall climate change will pose a serious threat to agriculture by damaging the crop yields this in turn affects the food security of the world okay this is the second impact thirdly let us see the impact of climate change on inflation see it may look something new but in the reality the climate change is increasingly affecting the macroeconomic policies of the countries see the erratic monsoons extreme weather events and rising temperatures will disrupt agricultural productivity this lead to supply side shocks and increases the demand this causes inflationary pressures in the country for example in 2020 there was a less production of onion due to unseasonal rains this caused inflation in onion prices and very recently in june 2023 the tomato prices went high due to heat waves and cyclone led crop damages okay this is the third impact fourthly let us see the impact of climate change on infrastructure as we all know physical infrastructure such as bridges roads ports electrical grids and several communication systems they often play a vital role in country's development but climate change induced weather events like heavy rains floods snow or temperature changes can destroy the existing structures and facilities okay so overall the climate change affects physical infrastructure and fifthly let us see the impact of climate change on poverty see the climate change increases the factors that leads to poverty for example the events like urban floods will damage the slums destroy homes and livelihoods so the people migrate to other place for their livelihood and occurrence of extreme heat waves makes it difficult for the poor people who mostly work in outdoor jobs okay according to unhcr data over the past decade that is from 2010 to 2019 weather related events displaced an estimated 23.1 million people on average each year and these people are more vulnerable to poverty so on one hand the climate change pushes the people into poverty and on the other hand it leads to migration okay now finally let us see the impact of climate change on vulnerable sections now first let us see the impacts of climate change on children according to children climate risk index of unicef globally 1 in 7 children are exposed to at least 5 major climate and environmental hazard annually the index also noted that in 2020 nearly 10 million children were displaced due to extreme weather related events so it is clear that the impact of climate change on children is very high now talking about the impacts of climate change on women see the climate change affects women more than the men this is due to gender disparities in access to food health care and education apart from this extreme heat due to climate change worsens maternal and neonatal outcomes okay this is all about the impacts of climate change on various sectors so you can quote all these data and examples in your answer okay now moving on to see about the solutions to address climate change firstly as mentioned in the article a national carbon accounting system can be followed to tackle climate change here national carbon accounting system means accounting the various carbon emissions in our day to day activities this system will bring the entire nation starting from individuals and households under one carbon accounting framework this process will account all human and non human activities in the world and their carbon emissions so by adopting national carbon accounting system we can internalize 
carbon reduction goals of the country and the world okay this is the first solution secondly one health approach should be followed to address climate change see one health approach is a new approach it recognizes that the health of the people is closely connected to the health of animals and environment under this approach the health of the animals and environment are maintained in good pace to safeguard the health of the people this is because if one parameter in this triangle gets affected it will affect the other two for example if the animals are getting affected the human can also get affected through zoonotic disease and so on okay this is the second solution that is the one health approach thirdly increased collaboration of the countries is essential for combating climate change historically the developed countries are responsible for huge carbon emissions but now the burden is shifted towards the developing nations to reduce carbon emissions this inequality should be addressed and the countries should collaborate with each other to share best practices apart from this the developing countries should fulfill its commitment of 100 billion us dollars a year for the developing countries to fight climate change okay this is the third solution and finally some of the steps taken by india like international solar alliance mission life they should be taken as a model program around the world to combat climate change okay these are all some of the solutions to tackle climate change okay now we have completed the body part now finally let us see the conclusion see the conclusion can be like the scientific evidence of climate change is clear so climate change is a reality and we should fight against the climate change the impacts of climate change are threat to human well being and the health of the planet so a global action is needed against climate change to ensure a livable future of our next generation okay this can be a balanced conclusion for this question okay and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion through the mains answer writing approach we understood the impacts of climate change on various sectors and we saw about the solutions to tackle climate change now with these points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article the news is that african swine fever was reported for the first time in kolikod kerala while there have been previous cases in the wayanad district of kerala this is the first case reported from kolikod okay see african swine fever is classified as a highly contagious viral disease by the world organization for animal health okay this is all about the news now in this discussion let us understand some points about african swine fever from prelims perspective african swine fever or african swine flu is a highly contagious viral disease that affects domestic pigs and wild boars see this disease is known for its devastating impact on the pig farming industry apart from this the disease also has significant economic and food security implications okay the african swine fever infection was first detected in kenya in 1921 it was detected as a disease that killed domestic pigs since then the african swine fever has been reported in various countries and also in states of india including kerala and some northeastern states okay now what is the causative agent of african swine fever the disease is caused by the african swine fever virus this virus is a unique enveloped dna virus and it belongs to the family of asper virida okay now talking about the symptoms of african swine fever the symptoms seen in pigs are high grade fever poor appetite coughing breathing problems diarrhea vomiting and red lesions note that the symptoms of infection is seen only in domestic pigs and the closely related european wild boar and some of the wild african pig species such as warthogs bush pigs jain forest hogs they do not develop any symptoms okay so basically these animals are the natural hosts of african swine fever virus and note that the disease has fatality rate of about 100 percentage now moving on to see about how this disease is transmitted see the transmission of african swine fever can be direct or indirect the direct transmission is through contact with an infected wild pig and the indirect transmission is by contact through ingestion of contaminated material such as food waste feed or garbage or also through biological vectors such as ticks okay see the african swine fever virus can also survive on cloths boots wheels and other materials 
and it also survive in various pork products such as ham sausages or bacon so through these materials they can be indirectly transmitted okay this is how the african swine fever gets transmitted now you may have a question will african swine fever affect humans see according to world health organization african swine fever is not a danger to human health this is because the african swine fever is not a zoonotic disease this means that the african swine fever does not spread from animals to humans okay despite it is not affecting the humans it affects the farming business because the deaths of pigs lead to loss of income for the farmers okay now what are the prevention measures know that there is currently no vaccine for african swine fever some of the prevention measures include biosecurity practices on pig farms early detection of disease and separation of infected animals can help in the prevention of african swine fever transmission so precautionary measures and awareness are the only way to prevent african swine fever okay and that's all regarding this discussion this discussion is about the african swine fever then we saw about the symptoms of african swine fever and finally we saw some points about the transmission and prevention measures of african swine fever now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article the news is that yesterday the central government has notified the constitution of the national turmeric board it was constituted to meet a long standing demand by turmeric farmers across the country see this decision comes ahead of the assembly election in telangana and note that telangana is the second largest producer of turmeric okay this is all about the news now in this discussion let us learn some points about turmeric crop and about the turmeric board now let's start with turmeric crop see turmeric is an important commercial spice crop grown in india the scientific name of turmeric is curcuma longa see turmeric is a perennial herbaceous plant of the ginger family here herbaceous means that the plant don't have woody stem the turmeric is a perennial plant because it can live more than 2 years through its rhizomes okay an important thing to note here is that turmeric is not a root crop but it is a stem tuber crop okay now we shall see the conditions for the growth of turmeric crop see turmeric can be grown in diverse tropical conditions from sea level to 1500 meter above sea level the suitable average temperature range is 20 to 35 degrees celsius with an annual rainfall of 1500 mm or more it can be cultivated under rain fed or irrigated conditions though it can grow on different types of soils well drained sandy or clay loam soils are best suited for turmeric production okay now moving on to say about the uses of turmeric see turmeric is used in diversified forms as flavoring and coloring agent in india turmeric has excellent healing properties see according to medicinal experts the healing and protective power of turmeric comes from two component molecules present in the turmeric one is curcumin and the other is piperin both these molecules give healing and protective power to turmeric see curcumin the active molecule in turmeric has powerful anti inflammatory and anti oxidant properties so it can be used to treat arthritis and joint inflammation okay now coming to the production of turmeric note that india is the largest producer of turmeric in the world apart from india the turmeric is also cultivated in other countries of south asia and southeast asia in india maharashtra is the largest producer of turmeric then telangana comes second and followed by tamil nadu okay these are all some of the important points about turmeric crop now finally we will look at turmeric board see the turmeric board was primarily created to meet the export target of rupees 8400 crore the board will focus on the development and growth of turmeric and turmeric products in the country okay note that the chairperson of the board will be appointed by the center apart from chairman the board will also include members from the ministry of ayush department of pharmaceuticals ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare ministry of commerce and industry and so on apart from this the turmeric board will also have representatives from state governments okay see as of now only these informations are available about turmeric board so we have to wait for detailed information about turmeric board and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the turmeric crop and we saw some points about the turmeric board 
Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. Recently, the Union Cabinet has decided to raise the subsidy of LPG cylinders under the PM Ujwala scheme. The subsidy was raised from rupees 200 to rupees 300 per cylinder. This decision is expected to benefit 9.6 crore families in India. Okay, this is the crux of the article. Now, in this discussion, let us see the PM Ujwala Yojana from Prelims perspective. The PM Ujwala Yojana was launched in May 2016. It is a flagship scheme of the central government, and it is being implemented by the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. The scheme was launched with an objective to provide clean cooking fuel to poor households across the country. Okay, now let us see the features of the scheme. Under Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana, a deposit-free LPG connection is provided to adult women who belongs to below poverty line family. See this particular below poverty line family should not have existing LPG connection in the name of any family member of the household. If this condition is satisfied, then only the LPG connection is given under Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana. Okay. See under the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana, initially the target was set to provide eight crore LPG connections under phase one. This was achieved successfully in September 2019. So by keeping phase one as the base. and to cover the remaining poor households pradhan mantri ujwala yojana phase 2 was launched in august 2021 under the phase 2 the government aimed to provide 1 crore additional pradhan mantri ujwala yojana connections and this target was successfully achieved in january 2022 later the government increased the target to 60 lakh additional lpg connections under the ujwala yojana 2.0 So as of now, more than 9.60 crore LPG connections are given under the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana scheme. Okay, this is all about the features of the scheme. Now let us see the objective of the scheme. Firstly, the scheme aimed at empowering women and protecting the women health. Secondly, the scheme aimed at reducing the number of deaths in India due to unclean cooking fuel. That is nothing but reducing the number of deaths due to indoor air pollution. and finally the scheme aimed at preventing young children from acute respiratory illness caused due to indoor air pollution okay this is all about the objectives of the scheme now finally let us see the beneficiaries of the scheme see the beneficiaries of pradhan mantri ujwala yojana are identified under socio economic caste census list apart from this other identified categories such as scheduled caste households scheduled tribe households most backward class households are also the beneficiaries of pradhan mantri ujwala yojana also note that under ujwala phase 2 the migrant workers from other states are also covered under ujwala scheme the phase 2 was aimed to provide maximum benefit to the migrants who live in other states and who find it difficult to submit address proof as of now the migrants can give self declaration to avail the benefit under the pradhan mantri ujwala yojana okay and that's all regarding this discussion this discussion is all about pradhan mantri ujwala yojana then about the features and objectives of pradhan mantri ujwala yojana and finally we saw some points about the beneficiaries of pradhan mantri ujwala yojana now with these points in mind let us move on to the next part of the video that is to discuss preliminary practice questions as friends today we are having four questions i will solve three of them and one will be a quiz question now look at the first question this question is regarding african swine flu Here three statements are given. We have to find how many of the statements are correct. Look at the first statement. The infections of the African swine flu virus is confined to the African continent. See this statement is incorrect because initially the infection was confined to African continent, but now the infection has reached multiple countries across Asia, Caribbean, Europe, and the Pacific, and it also reached India. So first statement is incorrect. Now coming to the second statement, African swine flu virus is the only known dna arbovirus see arboviral disease is a general term used to describe infections caused by a group of virus due to the bite of infected arthropods such as mosquitoes and ticks and note that the african swine flu virus is the only dna arbovirus except african swine flu virus all arboviruses are rna viruses so second statement is correct now coming to the third statement it affects humans when they come in contact with infected pigs so this statement is incorrect as we saw in the discussion the african swine flu does not affect humans and it is not a zoonotic disease so third statement is incorrect 
in this question only one statement is correct so the correct answer for the question is option a only one moving on let's take up the second question here a description of a particular tree or plant is given we have to identify the description describes which of the given tree or plant i'll read out the description it is the ancient and sacred spice of india known as indian saffron it is an important commercial spice crop grown in india it is used in diversified forms as a condiment flavoring and coloring agent and as a principal ingredient in indian culinary as curry powder it has antiviral activities and hence finds use in the drug industry and cosmetic industry which of the following tree or plant is described above here the answer is option c turmeric moving on let's take up the final question this question is regarding pradhan mantri ujwala yojana here three statements are given we have to find how many of the statements are correct look at the first statement it aims to provide deposit free lpg connection to adult women from poor households so this statement is correct it is one of the main objective of pradhan mantri ujwala yojana now come to the second statement it is implemented by ministry of chemicals and fertilizers see this statement is incorrect because the pradhan mantri ujwala yojana scheme is implemented by the ministry of petroleum and natural gas so second statement is incorrect now come to the third statement there is a government subsidy of up to 6 refills of cylinder per year so this statement is incorrect because under the pradhan mantri ujwala yojana the government provides subsidy for up to 12 refills per year okay here only four statement is correct so the correct answer for the question is option a only one this is a quiz question for you today i will post this quiz question in a community section try to answer it and displayed here is a mains question for your practice go through the question write your answer and post it in the comment section with this we have come to the end of the video if you found our video to be useful do like comment and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe shankaraya's academy youtube channel thank you for listening